Praise the Lord, everybody. You know, I love for you to join me on Wednesday nights on Doing It God's Way. And I'm so blessed to be here with you tonight and blessed to be sharing another Bible teaching and prayer with all of my listeners and viewers. I pray God's blessings over each and every last one of you tonight. And I pray that you will get something out of this lesson tonight. Once again, I am not sure that I will finish this lesson tonight because there is a lot that needs to be said. I wasn't trying to do this lesson. Um, I kind of wanted to do something else, but my spirit just felt so led to begin teaching on this lesson tonight that, you know, does God really give us a second chance when we feel that we've disobeyed him or we've done something terrible does God really and truly uh, help us out? Does God really and truly look upon us? Is there true mercy from God? Is there true forgiveness from God? Will God allow us to get up and try it again? You understand? And so, so many people need to hear this because the devil has fooled so many people and caused them to think that God will not give them a second chance. And that second chance means from what? Ever you need a second chance about. You could need a second chance about your job or your child or your parents or a friend, uh, uh, your church. There's so many things that we could, your education. There's so many things that we could feel that we need a second chance. And tonight I'm going to deal with that. Does God really give me a second chance when I feel like I've done something awful? This is so important because we are so tired of the enemy deceiving people and making them think that God is still judging us. The problem is that we are still judging ourselves. That's the problem. But you know, we're going to let the word of God prove this tonight. Go with me to Jonah, the book of Jonah. And this is a very familiar story but we're going to break this thing down and get the meat of the word out of this story. Because this is not just about Jonah and some big fish. But this, is, this, this, this book gives life-changing lessons about God and second chances and the fact that you cannot do anything bad enough for God not to give you a second chance. Now, I feel my help coming on already, okay? I'm not going to read every scripture. There are four chapters in Jonah, and as you know, we don't have time to do four chapters, but we're going to highlight certain scriptures, and again, I'm going to repeat myself that I may not finish this tonight. We might have to go to part two and even part three, but however, we're going to start tonight at Jonah chapter one. Get your Bible, Jonah chapter one. And I'm going to start at verse 1. And it says, The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amite. Go, this is what God is saying to Jonah. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it. Now, now, now. Because its wickedness has come up before me. Now, Jonah did. What most people would do, preach against, tell, my God, tell somebody that the Lord is saying that they're wicked, point out their faults, point out their wrongs. People nowadays, they don't want you telling them anything. Even back then, people did not want to hear anything that was opposite to what they wanted to do. People are people. The world is the same. Homosexuality went on back in Sodom and Gomorrah days. Homosexuality is going on now. Fornication and adultery went on then. Fornication and adultery is going on now. Lying and hypocrisy went on then. Lying and hypocrisy went on when is going on now. And for this reason, Jesus came. For this reason, Jesus came. And not only did he come, but he died and he was resurrected. So that our sins might be forgiven. My God. But let me go on. Go to the great city of Nineveh. And preach against it. Because it's wickedness has come up before me. This is the Lord talking. But Jonah ran. 
Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish, which was in the opposite direction of Nineveh. He tried to get as far as he could from that city where God was telling him to go because he didn't want any parts of it. He did not want my God. How many of us, there is something, a door that God wanted us to walk through, but we didn't want to walk through that door. And so therefore, we ran away from it. We didn't accept it. Jesus, help us, Lord. Okay? We didn't want to deal with that. So we went in another direction. My God, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Okay? And how many of you would actually have the nerve to tell somebody that the Lord said, you're going to have to change your ways, okay? Let me tell you, if you don't have the nerve, you're going to have to get up the nerve because God is calling for bold soldiers now and it's not you that stands before people, but it is the power of God that lies within you and greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It doesn't matter how much you preach, okay, and how little people receive it. If God is on your side, God's word will be performed in their lives. My God, my God, my God. God backs up what he says. You hear what I'm telling you? As we're going to find out, as Jonah's going to find out, that God is going to back up what he says. Good God Almighty. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed to Tarshish to flee from the Lord. To flee from the Lord. He was running. He was trying to get as far as he could. Ah, he was hightailing it out of there and trying to go someplace as far away as he could. How many of you are running tonight and you're trying to get as far away from a door that God wants you to go into? You're running as hard as you can. Good God Almighty. Oh, let's read on, saints. Let's read on. Uh, I'm at verse 4. Then the Lord. Who did this? The Lord sent a great wind on the sea. And such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. Okay. Then the Lord sent the wind. The wind didn't just happen. Oh, you need to understand that whatever wind is blowing in your life, whatever turmoil is blowing in your life, God has allowed it to happen. Good God Almighty. He has allowed it. And we're going to get down to why he has allowed it. We're not there yet. But God has allowed the wind of turmoil to blow in your life. Good God Almighty. The Lord causes things to go happen. The Lord uh, is your uprising and your downfalling. God is in charge of everything that's going on in your life. Whether you think it's good or whether you think it's bad. God, God takes care of his own. And God takes charge of your life and what is happening to you. It may not seem like God is in it, but I'm here to tell you tonight. God is in it. Good God. I'm going to be teaching to somebody tonight. Somebody needs this word. I'm going to read verse 4 again. Then the Lord sent a great wind. The Lord sent the turmoil. The Lord sent it. The Lord sent your lack of peace and your lack of, of a calmness about you. The Lord sent the disruption in your life. The Lord did it to the Lord caused the people to be hostile toward you. The Lord did it. Good God Almighty. Oh my God. God sent a win. There's a reason why God has sent this win. And it was not to destroy Jonah. Let's go on, saints. Let's go on. And you know the story. I'm not going to read every last one. But he got on this ship and the wind came. And the sailors on that ship were saying, wait, wait, wait. Something's wrong here. Somebody on this ship doesn't belong on this ship. Somebody on this ship is causing us harm. You don't understand that sometimes the things and the decisions that you make in your flesh cause harm to the loved ones around you. Good God Almighty. 
Oh, I didn't say something hard tonight, saints. But go with me, because we're going to come to a joyous, joyous end, okay? Sometimes the decisions that you make cause others to be hurt. Good God Almighty. It caused others to feel like they're sinking on down with you. You understand, good God Almighty. Oh, but there's a way out. This is not a doom and gloom lesson, saints. Trust you me, there's going to be joy in the morning of this teaching. Good God Almighty. Okay, but they went on and they said, okay, something's wrong here. Somebody's on this ship that shouldn't be. And so Jonah confessed up and said, it's me. I'm running from the Lord. Okay, and now let's go to chapter two. All right. And so they decided, what, what, what were they going to do? Okay, they said, okay, we got to get rid of Jonah. Okay, they didn't want to kill him. And they asked God to forgive us for killing this man because we know if we throw him off this boat into the sea, it's going to kill him. And so they didn't want to do it. But again, everything kept getting worse and worse. As long as Jonah remained on that boat, things kept getting worse. As long as you remain, good God Almighty, as long as you remain, my God, in the opposite direction of where God wants you to go to, things are going to continue to get worse. And not only will they get worse for you, but they're going to continue to get worse for those that are involved with you. Do you understand? Good God Almighty. Okay. And so they finally decided to save our lives. We have got to throw Jonah overboard. And so they threw him off the ship. Now what happened? Let's go to verse 17 of, we're still in chapter one. But, I love it when there's a but. But the Lord, here we go, provided a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was inside the fish three days and three nights. God didn't just provide a whale, well, a fish for Jonah. What God did was God provided a place where Jonah could stay ha, until he got himself together. I'm going to say that again. God provided a safety place, a place of safety. What, Pastor Ross, inside of the belly of a whale? Yes, because otherwise he would have died. He would have died in disobedience, you understand. He would have died and lost his soul. Understand, but God provided a place in the deep of the ocean, a place that should have destroyed him. God provided a safe place, good God Almighty, for him to stay. God has provided you a landing place, that place where you are now in your life that you think is so horrible. God has provided that space for you. That you can stay there. Good God Almighty. We don't know how many days. The Bible says for Jonah three days and three nights. We don't know how long it's going to take you. Good God Almighty. God knows how long it's going to take you. You understand. And so God has you in this place. That seems to be a place of turmoil. Okay. That seems to be a mess. They had to be a mess inside of that fish. I can't even imagine. You got guts. You got blood. You got a, a fecal matter. You got urine. You got all this trash. Uh, and, and whales eat everything. You got all this trash inside. And Jonas, my God from Zion. How many of you feel like your life is just trash? You feel like you're just living. You're living in a state of trash. Everything around you is going wrong. Good God Almighty. Nothing for you is right. Oh my God, I'm talking to somebody right now. Nothing for you is going the way you planned. Nothing for you was going the way you thought. <laughs> and, and, and you also had the nerve to think that God wasn't on your side. But don't you see that God is yet on Jonah's side? And God is yet on your side. Just because God doesn't do things the way you want it done, does that mean that God is not on your side? Good God Almighty. It doesn't mean that he's left you or forsaken you. Oh, help me, Lord. Jesus, I'm talking to somebody. I'm telling you. But the Lord provided. The Lord provided a great fish. The Lord has provided a platform for you to stay at. It might be, it might be stinky there. 
It might be smelly there. It might be a place where you don't want to be. It might be a place in your life. Oh, my God. A season in your life that you're walking through that you don't want to walk through. This is a dry season. This is a season that it seems like you're never coming out. Jonah didn't know when he was going to come out of that fish. He had no idea. Oh, God. You don't know when you're going to come out. You have no idea. It seems like you're never going to come out. It seems like your life is never going to turn around. It seems like it's never going to go in the direction that you want it to go in. But I'm here to tell you now that if God placed you there, okay, because of something that you did that you feel was awful, God has not walked away from you. He is still providing for you in a way that doesn't make sense to you. It doesn't make sense to Jonah that he is in the mouth of a whale. It doesn't make sense to you that you're in the situation that you're in. Good God Almighty. Help me, God. Help me, Jesus. Let me get a drink of water. Lord Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. Y'all bear with me, saints. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Let's read verse or uh, chapter 2. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. Maybe God wants you to pray more. <laughs> Maybe you're still where you are because you're not praying enough. Maybe you only pray when the time gets so unbearable you can't stand it. Or maybe you only pray when you feel like praying. Or maybe you only make time for God when you feel like you got time to make for God. God is holding you there until you understand that you've got to pray more. Nothing is accomplished without consistent prayer. Consistent fasting. Consistent seeking of God consistent. You can't do it this month and then don't do it for another year. You can't do it now and then don't do it for another four or five months up the road. <laughs> Consistency is what God is looking for. I told y'all that there was a season in my life where I hit and miss with my prayer time and the Lord spoke to me and said, you must be consistent and persistent. I wasn't getting anywhere spiritually with God until I got consistent and until I became persistent, which meant no matter how busy my life was, no matter how much I had going on, I, 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 I was required. God was requiring me to make time for him. He didn't care about my excuses. He didn't care how I felt about it. He said, Rosalind, this is what you have to do. So I need you to understand that God, God is talking to you in this dry season. He's talking to you on this platform where you are in your life right now. God is saying, I'm still trying to get your attention. I am still, I am still working on you. And then your season's not going to change until I get out of your life what I want. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. Even though you went another direction. Even though you went another way. Even though you did something that you thought you just could not forgive yourself for. God is saying, you don't understand. I'm with you. And I'm working it out. But you're going to have to do it my way. You're going to have to do it the way I want you to do it. You're not going to be able to do it haphazardly. And you're not going to be able to do it because I got fired up in church on Sunday. But now Monday through Saturday, I, I'm, not, I'm not praying. Okay? You are going to have to be consistent and persistent with your communication with God. And until you do that, nothing is going to change. Nothing is going to be different about your situation. Let's read. Let's read. Let's read. Oh, from inside the fish. I'm at cha uh, chapter 2, verse 1. Uh, let, me, let me put my glasses on. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God. He said, in my distress, I call 
called to the Lord. Let's stop right there. In my distress, I called to the Lord. What do a lot of us do? <laughs> when we get shown up down, that's the time we don't pray. Oh, my God. Did you say that, Pastor Ross? Oh, yes, I did. When we get shown up beat up, when we get shown up distressed and upset, that's when we don't pray. That's when we feel, well, God has failed me another time. Well, God has let me down. Okay, and now I don't feel like praying. What happened to consistent and persistent? God didn't say when you feel like it. When I was a young adult, my God, I would sing according to how I felt. If I was having a bad day, then I would get up and just kind of sing. You know, just, just sing a song. Like I'm singing a lullaby to myself. You understand? And then if I felt all excited about God, then I would put my energy into it to the best of my ability at that time. You understand? And God spoke to me and told me, I cannot sing any kind of way for him. It's not about my feelings. I cannot be worried about how I feel. I have to press over top of how I feel, forget about how I feel, and still sing for him with my whole heart. You cannot be worried about how you feel. The fact that you're depressed is not an excuse to God. The fact that you feel anxiety is not an excuse to God. Because God knows that in his presence, that anxiety and that depression will leave. God knows that if you press your way through to him, the change that you need will happen. God knows that your spirit will be uplifted and your soul will be revived in the prayer closet. When your knees are bent and you're saying, as Jonah said, in my distress. What is it about us that when we get showed up distressed, that's when we want to pray the least. That's when we want to be bothered with God the least. It's like we're angry at him. It's like, well, God, you failed me. You disappointed me. You let me down. So now I don't feel like talking to you. That is a trick of the enemy. And the devil knows that if you don't talk to God, you're going to be stuck right where you are. Good God Almighty. And I mean talk to him consistently and persistently. Don't you know everybody's busy all the time? God knew you were going to be busy before you were even born. God doesn't care about that. What he cares about is you making him priority in your life. You've got to show God that he is priority. No matter what else you're doing, no matter what else is going on, no matter how you feel, he is still priority. Good God Almighty. Are y'all getting this? Lord Jesus. Uh, I can talk. I've been guilty of these things. Uh, I know what I'm talking about. Y'all hear me say all the time. I talk from my experience. Because I want you to know that these pastors, including me, that you see, ain't always been high on the hog. We haven't always been sailing along in God. We have had human encounters. Good God Almighty, I can't speak for anybody else. I'm going to speak for me. I have had human encounters. I am a human being. And the same things that you are experiencing in your life, I have experienced them. But the difference is that I allow God to teach me. And when God would teach me something, I would obey. I would do it. I would Follow his command. And God taught me how to soar. Good God. How to soar in the spirit. How to soar in the things of God. And that's why I'm able to tell you. I know how you feel. I've been there and done that. I had times that I didn't want to talk to God. Oh my God. I felt like God had let me down. He had disappointed me. I knew he hadn't forsaken me. But now I found out. I said, God, listen. I still pray about it because now I say, God, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed, Lord. I know you're with me, but bear with me. I'm just so disappointed. Tell God how you feel instead of harboring it in your heart and in your thoughts and in your mind. God already knows anyhow. 
Confess up. Confess up to him and he will help you. He will help you. I'm telling you, he'll help you. But And you just feel so much better when you say, God, I'm just, I'm just disappointed. I'm disappointed that you didn't do it. Good God about it. And when you release those words out of your spirit, you'll find that your spirit will start lifting. It'll start changing. Because now you've had a heart-to-heart -heart with God. It's just like when you have a heart-to-heart -heart with your spouse. I don't like the term partner, okay? That's a modern-day term which incorporates men with men, women with women. I don't use the term with your partner. I'm saying with your spouse. I'm biblical. I'm in the Bible, okay? With your spouse or with your good friend, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I understand you've had a heart-to-heart -heart and you've lifted your, your burden off your heart by telling them how you feel. God wants us to tell him how we feel. He wants us to talk to him. He says, come on to me, all you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to me. Come to me and discuss it with me. Tell me all about it. Lord Jesus, I knew I wasn't going to finish. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, in my distress, I called to the Lord. And what happened? And he answered me. <laughs> Listen to the next verse. From the depths of the grave, I call for help. Mm -hmm. Oh, did I just say, tell God how you feel? I call for help. And you listen to my cry. Oh, God, the number of times I have shed endless tears before the Lord. Oh, I cried so hard. And one time in my life, I was filling the trash can up with dirty tissues. By the time I finished crying, the trash can was full. I cried to the Lord for help. And I let it all out. I let my discouragement out. I let my heartache out. I let my frustration out. I let my anxiety out. I let my disappointment out. I cried unto the Lord. And guess what he did? He listened. He listened. How you know he listened, Pastor? Why? Because I sure felt better when I finished. Oh, I felt so much better. And I was able to say, God, help me. Help me. All God wants you to do is say, God, help me. Help me, God. Help me. I'm drowning. I'm sinking. Good God Almighty. I'm drowning. I don't know what to do. Tell me what to do. Speak to me, God. Speak to me through somebody. Speak to me in a way that I know it's you. Speak to me in a way that I won't have to question it. But I know you, you almighty God, are speaking to me. You've got to tell God what you need and what you want. And you, it's a, listen, don't let the devil keep you in bondage. Be not entangled again into the yoke of bondage. God has set you free when he saved your soul. Do not allow the enemy to entangle you. Yeah, I got him. I got her. I got her entangled in fear, in doubt. Now she's upset with God. Ha, ha, ha. The demons are just laughing. I'm putting my rope around her feet, around his feet, and he's entangled now. He's all disappointed with God, and he ain't going to tell God about it. Ha. He ain't going to cry out to God. No, because he's mad at God. That's what the devil is saying. Do not give the devil that kind of victory. Go ahead on and tell God how you feel and say, God, I need your help. God, I don't even feel like praying, but I'm asking you to help me right now. Good God Almighty. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. In my distress, I called to the Lord and he answered me. From the depths of the grave, I called for help. And you listen to my cry. What an awesome God. What a loving father that he hears your cry. You think God doesn't know your pain? He knows it. He wants you to tell him your pain. That's all. He wants you to talk to him on a consistent basis. Daily. Good God Almighty. Ooh, I'm going to shut this down tonight. My God, my God, there's so much more to come.
There's so much more to come. Join me next week. Join me next week. Oh, let's go to the throne of grace. Father God, we just thank you right now that you are a God who listens. <laughs> you are a God who hears us when we cry. You are a God who understands our pain. You are a God who understands our disappointment. You are a God who understands our frustration. Somebody under the sound of my voice, God needed to hear this tonight. And they will need to hear the conclusion of the matter next week should you allow us to still be here. Oh, Father God, we just thank you tonight for walking with us, God, and showing us that no matter how we're feeling or where we are in our lives right now, you are right there with us and you have allowed it to be so. You have allowed it, God. We may have caused it by running in the opposite direction. But you are taking that situation and you're bringing something out of it that we could never even imagine. You're bringing such good out of this, Lord, that we can't even understand it right now. Because all we know, God, right now is our tears, our pain, our sorrow, our sadness. That's all we know and that's all we care about right now. But you, you care about our future. You care about our lives. You want us to have life and have it abundantly. Oh, God, you want us to have fullness of life in you. And there is a way that we must walk in order to achieve that. So you take our mistake and you don't hold it against us. But you just want us to cry out to you. Cry out to you about what we've done and how we feel. Cry out to you. And oh, God, help us to do that. Help everyone under the sound of my voice to, to let go of their pride. My God, the blood of Jesus against pride. Let them to let go of that pride, oh God. And let them open themselves up before you and say, Father, here I am. Help me. Help me. Help me. I need your help. I did this and I did that. And I need your help to get out of this mess that I have created. Oh, God, help your people to come clean with you. And let them know that you are there to hear them. And not only are you going to hear them, but you're going to rescue them. Huh? You are going to turn it around. You're going to take this, these events. And you're going to work it for their good. That fact the devil thought would destroy us. You are not going to allow destruction, but you will cause us to soar in your mighty name. It's in you that we live and breathe and have our being. It's in you. It's not in us. It's not in our smartness. It's not in our abilities, but it's in you, the power of the living God. We thank you. We praise you tonight. Let this word stick deep in our hearts. Let it run around in our ears, in our spirits, day and night, oh God. So that those of us that may be in that place right now, we now know what we need to do. We can begin the process, my God, of being delivered from where we are now. And we give you all the praise. I pray that you bless everyone that's listening under the sound of my voice. I pray the peace of God over their lives. I thank you for renewed hope because somebody was about to give up. Oh God, somebody was about to give up. Oh God, but you say tonight, not so. Hear my word. Hear my word. God is saying, hear my word. Hear my word. Don't give up. Don't give up. For that's just what the enemy wants. But God is saying, I've made a way. I've made a way. And you got to trust me. And you got to do what my servant is telling you to do. That's what God is saying. That's what the Lord is saying tonight. And we give you honor, glory, and praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It is so. In Jesus' name. Amen. Tune back with me next week. We're going to finish this. Y'all thought it was just about Jonah and the whale. Huh? Good God. There are life teaching lessons in this story 
To God be praised and to God be glorified. I thank God for all of you tuning in with me tonight. I trust you'll be able to join me next week should God say the same. In the meantime, as always, I love you with the love of Jesus Christ. I really do. God bless you all.